Thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. I'm here today to bring you some information about the Surefire Enhanced Bolt Carrier Group for the AR-15 series of rifles. Or for that matter, it was really designed for the M16 series of rifles because this Enhanced Bolt Carrier Group was designed by James Sullivan himself, one of the two men who were, of course, dedicated to the effort of downsizing the AR-10 by Eugene Stoner into the AR-15, originally in 222 Remington, then 223 Remington, and of course, ultimately 556 NATO. And one of the things when they did and designed that gun is they were working with a 20 inch long barrel and everything around it was designed around that 20 inch barrel and that gas system. The AR-15 is, if anything, essentially a helicopter. A lot of things have to be in balance for it to function properly. And in the process of balancing that, which of course we have here an M forgery, which is not a 20 inch barrel, I'm gonna to get to that more in a minute. One of the things they did to balance that was the overall mass of the bolt carrier group the length of the gas system and gas port dimension, of course, and the barrel, the weight of the buffer and the buffer spring, and those things all in tandem balanced the gun out. And the things that you need to balance to make an AR-15 series gun reliable is dwell time for the most part. 5.56 is a very high pressure cartridge, and if this tries to open up, or if the bolt carrier group tries to open up too soon, you're going to try and extract a cartridge that's still under pressure and it will land up ultimately either tearing the case rim or leaving the cartridge case stuck in the chamber, which of course is something we know does happen in shorter barrel AR-15 variants because the original 20 inch gas system was designed around that cartridge, those pressure curves and the mass of the bolt carrier group, the buffer and the spring. As we reduced the barrel length, we started seeing issues in which this would try to open up too early and induce issues like that, as well as, as the bolt carrier group reciprocated, you would necessarily not have enough time for the magazine to actually put another round aligned with the bolt for it to chamber and you would have a misfeed, or you would have another problem, particularly in full auto, in which the bolt carrier group would bounce and then induce malfunctions as well because you would have hammer follow or other things occur in which the gun would not cycle properly in full auto. Additionally, even with semi-automatic guns, as they get higher round counts and the gas port erodes, you get higher gas pressures in the system, which can induce similar issues that you see in high volumes of fire with full auto when the bolt carrier group and stuff accelerate as you're firing the gun as it gets hotter. So, Jim Sullivan himself actually worked on trying to enhance and fix that problem in fairly recent history over the last couple of years with the enhanced bolt carrier group that he designed. So what we're going to do here is talk about what he did in an attempt to fix that problem or remediate some of those issues that are going on with the legacy system and how they compare to the original bulk carrier group spring and buffer that we see in most ARs today. So at any rate, if you order this, uh, Brownells is carrying this by the way, by the way and um, it comes like this essentially and you open up the box and it comes with a couple things, one of which might surprise you. One is a manual, all right, but here is the bolt carrier group. And it also comes with its own buffer spring and buffer. And there's a very significant reason to, as to why that is. So let's compare them as, as a result and we'll talk about that. So you'll see, first off, I'm gonna go through some of the attributes of what the bolt carrier group did and what James Sullivan did with his enhanced bolt carrier group to help remediate some of the issues I discussed earlier in the video. This is a traditional standard M4 style heavy buffer and spring. And this is the one that comes with the enhanced system. This, of course, has a lot of weight in it. It is still a heavy buffer, but as you can see, it is shorter. And that's for a good reason, as is the spring, which I'll get to in just a moment. Let's go through the attributes of the actual bolt carrier in association with a standard bolt carrier and the things that he's done in regards to changing the design. First of all, they didn't change anything on the bolt itself. This bolt is a standard bolt. You can take the bolt out of a standard bolt carrier group and put it in the enhanced, and it will make no difference whatsoever. They will function just fine. What you will see, a couple things are really immediately off the, uh, obvious right off the bat. First of all, this part is longer, which adds mass to the bolt carrier group, as well as the gas key only has one screw and one staking point, and it has been shortened. And the reason for that is to lengthen the actual stroke of the bolt carrier group as it's reciprocating in the action. That gives the magazine a longer duration of time to feed a round into the action for it to cycle into the chamber, as well as it would decrease the overall rate of fire in full auto applications. I'll show that and demonstrate that on the lower later in the video. So that's the major difference you see right there. The gas carrier key is different and that causes it to reciprocate differently, which is why you actually need this shorter buffer and spring as it cycles through the system. If you have a standard length buffer, it will not get the full length or stroke length that it will get now that it can have with that. 
more about that a little bit later. Other things which are not obvious are changes in the cuts to the carrier pin. This carrier pin groove or cut has been changed. The dimensions of it are different and what that does is provides approximately a 15% longer dwell time. So dwell time in the AR-15 is how long the bolt stays in battery or I should say locked and chambered. So you have a round here in the chamber, the hammer drops, hits the firing pin, fires the round, gas comes back into this gas key, fills this gas chamber behind the bolt and that's what causes this to then pull back, the bolt carrier group retracts and this cam port right here is what determines how soon it unlocks out of the chamber and then starts cycling backwards to then chamber a new round. By changing the cuts or the differences of the dimensions of this carrier pin cut that actually increases the dwell time by about 15 percent meaning as the gas fills into this area here it takes a little longer for the bolt carrier group to reciprocate back, turn the bolt and thus unlock it from the locking lugs in the receiver, the chamber excuse me. According to Surefire, it's approximately a 15% difference. So that's one major difference there that you would not be able to see by just looking at it, at least not with the naked eye, and not very easily. Again, I mentioned earlier, this part here is longer. You see that they've cut this away here, and this is, of course, much less area here, so there's more surface area of the bolt carrier group. This is to add mass. Additionally, Mr. Sullivan added another mass, another piece of mass in the rear, which is held in with this clip. This is slightly spring-loaded, and what this does is, since they've reduced the overall, they have increased the overall stroke of the gun, or the action during a cycling process, and they've reduced the length of the buffer, they needed to continue to add mass to the bolt care group because they were going to lose too much mass in the process. Additionally, by spring-loading this mass, this means what happens when this goes into battery and chambers around, particularly in full auto but in any application, it will reduce the or actually remove any bounce that will happen. If you look at high speed on a standard traditional bolt carrier group, especially on a gun that's getting hot or is overgassed, it goes back all the way, goes back into battery and then bounces slightly before it goes into locking and that can actually induce malfunctions in a full auto or overly gassed system. So by adding a spring-loaded weight to the rear of the bolt carrier group, that actually mitigates that carrier bounce that occurs in those particular situations. So we've gone through a couple things now that have changed. The carrier pin groove has been changed to increase dwell time by about 15%. The carrier key has been cut and shortened so that you can increase the length of the stroke of the system as it's cycling. A spring-loaded weight has been added to the rear of the bolt carrier group to reduce or remove bolt carrier bounce as well as to increase the overall mass of the bolt carrier which helps which helps also in incre increasing the dwell time of the system. The heavy buffer has been shortened to allow this shorter gas key to cycle fully in the system. Those are the major differences that are going on in this bolt carrier group. The bolt's the same, the extractor's the same, that's the same, the firing pin's the same, none of that's changed. The big differences are the groove, the gas key, and this weight in the back to reduce bounce and increase mass. It's funny, because I got to meet James Sullivan a couple years back. We have some episodes interviewing him on InRange TV. And I mentioned to him, I don't think it got into the video, but I mentioned to him that in a lot of the competition circles, people are doing low mass carrier groups to reduce recoil. And he looked at me and he's like, that's insane. And it's not insane if you're a competitor and you're looking for the lowest recoiling AR-15 that's tuned perfectly for the ammunition you're using for the purposes of having a better split time at a match. It is insane, however, if you're Jim Sullivan and you're designing a gun for military applications or full auto applications in which mass on the bolt carrier group increases dwell time and general uh, reliability of the system, particularly in an AR-15. So you'll see that when I retract the bolt carrier group to all the way to the rear, that's as far as it can go. The gas key actually prevents it from going further, as does the spring and the length of the buffer. So that actually means that when the gun's cycling, especially in full auto, it's only garnering that much inertia to chamber around or cycle around out of the magazine. If we put the Surefire or Jim Sullivan's spring and shortened buffer in, and then put the Surefire Jim Sullivan enhanced bolt carrier group into the system, and retract it all the way to the rear, we will now see that it actually goes significantly further back 
quite a bit. God, that almost looks like half an inch back further than the original bolt carrier group, which means that it gets more energy and more inertia during the process of chambering around. This means it'll strip around out of the magazine more reliably. It will also, since in full auto, it is cycling a longer length, it's essentially cycling further back into the system before it starts moving forward, it will reduce the overall fully automatic rate of fire. One thing that I can say that might be worrisome is that since when you go to an empty magazine and the bolt care and the bolt hold open pops up, you have more energy being deployed into this as it strikes it to hold the bolt carrier group open. Does that cause an issue with the lower or the, or the bolt hold open over time? I don't know. That would take a lot of rounds to find out. But anyways, all in all, those should increase the reliability of the gas system of the gun in general, especially when moving to shorter gas systems as we are over and over. We see 14, 10 inch barrels, etc. I think if you're going to go with an SBR or a very short barreled system, this bolt carrier group is worth considering, or especially in a full auto gun, there's probably applications here as well. If you're just using a traditional AR-15 and shooting it traditionally with standard semi-automatic fire control group, you may not really need this enhanced bolt carrier group and the standard bolt carrier groups are probably just fine. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed this kind of information and hopefully this sort of thing makes sense to you. It's kind of a deep dive on how the AR-15 works. Maybe that in itself was interesting. If you like it, please consider supporting us on Patreon. In Range is completely viewer supported by viewers only like you. We do not get any funding from any advertising money or sponsors or anything like that. It's completely viewer supported and Patreon is currently our method of doing that. If you already are a Patreon supporter, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for keeping In Range alive. If you're not, please consider it. If you can't, totally understand that. Please just subscribe to one of our multiple distribution points. You can find all of them at inrange.tv. Subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you very much.